So here is the experimental setup that we will use for uh, this presentation. Uh, so we have two parts. So first part is the impedance tube that we have here, which uh, comprise a source, a loudspeaker here, which is a conventional uh, Fostex loudspeaker. Uh, we have two microphones here that are used to uh, deduce the uh, absorption coefficient of the termination here. Uh, and this uh, device, so the loudspeaker and the microphone, are captured with the speed goat interface. So the uh, two inputs, so the two microphones are here, the inputs, and are uh, fed to the speed goat. And uh, the output is uh, fed by the speed goat to uh, the loudspeaker. So we will excite the loudspeaker with a swept, swept sign between 50 hertz and 500 hertz and measure the transfer function between the two microphones also with a speed goat. On the other side, we have the control. So here we have the electroacoustic absorber, which is composed of this device, which is a closed box loudspeaker with a microphone in the front and uh, an empty cavity at the back which will give you a certain resonant frequency for the electroacoustic absorber. So this device is put here. Um, so the, the idea is to sense the pressure in the front with this microphone. Uh, that is uh, the input of the speed goat. And the output of the speed goat, uh, which uh, goes to this uh, current amplifier here with a given gain, is uh, fed back to the loudspeaker as a current, as a uh, current source that drives the loudspeaker with a current that is a certain function of the pressure through the transfer function of the controller. And now we will use the interface that we will show just afterwards that, um, that enables to do both, uh, uh, both uh, sides of this experimental setup. First, set the electroacoustic absorber by providing the, uh, uh, the, the corresponding parameter for the control as a function of the target impedance and also the identification of the parameters of the passive loudspeaker. And on the other side, we're also able to use the same interface to control the measurement setup. That means feed the loudspeaker with a set swept side and uh, compute the transfer function uh, measured with a two microphone to deduce the absorption coefficient or the impedance of this termination after the ISO 10534.2 minus two uh, ISO standard. So prior to do the measurement, we need to uh, calibrate the impedance tube. Uh, so the impedance tube is composed, so you have two microphones here. We have one source here, and we will uh, generate a sweep sign between 50 hertz and 500 hertz, and do two measurements, one with the two microphones in this position, and then by switching it to microphone, we measure the transfer function between microphone one and microphone two, and we deduce the calibration factor by multiplying those two uh, calibration factor. So we start the measurement now. This is the first measurement. I forgot to mention that the termination for now is a loudspeaker in a shortcut configuration, which is somehow absorbing around the resonant frequency of the loudspeaker. Now we switch the two microphone and we repeat the measurement. And now we have the calibration factor that we can apply for the next measurement. We just have to re-switch the two microphone and get to the original position. And now we can do the measurement of uh, the absorber, but first we will do the, uh, we will uh, identify the parameter of the loudspeaker to apply the correct parameter for the control. The first step of the calibration of the control is to measure the loudspeaker in the enclosure in open circuit. So we'll unplug the loudspeaker so that it's open circuit, and we do the measurement of the absorption coefficient or the impedance of this loudspeaker. So as you can see, uh, on the figure on the right, you see that the absorption coefficient presents a maximum, which is around at the resonant frequency of the loudspeaker in the enclosure, which is in the range of 150 hertz. 
Uh, on the left uh, scheme, you see the amplitude and the phase of the impedance, and you see that at the resonance, the phase is equal to zero, so this is the dashed line curve uh, that goes from minus pi over 2 uh, over plus pi over 2, and the magnitude as um, present a, a, a minimum at the resonance, which is equal to the value of the acoustic resistance of this uh, loudspeaker, which has a certain value uh, that I can't see here, but I will explain afterwards. Now we do the same measurement, but in short circuit. So I have this plug, which is basically a short circuit. So I will just plug it to the loudspeaker and we repeat the measurement. Now the two curve superimpose, so the two measurements, you see that the measurement with a short circuit presents a higher value at resonance, even though it's uh, hidden by uh, the legend, uh, which is in the range of 0 0.8 uh, or even a bit more, I don't, I don't see clearly. Uh, also you see uh, some um, uh, broader bandwidth of absorption. And you see that on the left curve, that uh, the resonance you still have a phase of impedance that is equal to zero, and the amplitude of the, uh, the impedance has been shifted towards uh, higher values. So plugging the resistance just adds some acoustic resistance to the loudspeaker. And you can already use this loudspeaker, either in open circuit or with a shunt circuit, as a rather good absorber in the low frequency range, but with a narrow bandwidth of absorption. Now, we will use those measurements to identify the parameter of the control. So we will identify the parameter of the loudspeaker, so the resist mechanical resistance, the compliance, the mass, uh, also the force factor, um, and in order to be able to identify the good parameters to assign the correct control of impedance. Once we have done the two measurements of the open circuit and the short circuit uh, electroacoustic absorber, passive, uh, passive electroacoustic absorber, we need to do the identification of the TLS mode parameter. For that, we'll use a second interface that will download the two measurements and use curve fitting to estimate the parameter resistance, compliance, mass, BL factor, etc. Et so we start from the data sheet of the constructor that we have uh, provided in the in the parameter as a reference value. And now we will download the two measurements and process the curve fitting. And we get uh, those estimations that you see on the uh, new figure that uh, pops up, uh, which also provides estimation of new values for the resistance, the compliance, uh, the, the mass, and the force factor. And now we can use those parameters in the model of the loudspeaker which are essential for us to identify the good parameters for achieving a given uh, target acoustic impedance. And now we will see different cases of control and measure them in this impedance tube. Now let's stick to the very interesting part of this uh, presentation. We will uh, set the control. And first we will work with a broadband sound absorber. So uh, first of all, uh, you see this interface we have the possibility to assign a prescribed, a given uh, target uh, acoustic impedance. So for now, we have no control, so the values of the target uh, impedance are, so the coefficient mu r of resistance, mu m of mass, and mu c of compliance are all equal to one. So we don't change uh, the passive loudspeaker. Now we want to assign uh, an impedance to the loudspeaker, which is rho c. So we will uh, fill the, the field of uh, the target impedance with rho c or the normalized rho seed, which is 1. And then we will, um, we will f do first, uh, a first uh, measurement with this setting, with mu uh, m and mu c uh, is equal to 0 0.1, for instance. So dividing the mass by 10 and uh, augmenting the compliance by 10, or dividing the stiffness by 10. So we define the control law. Here we have the, both the diagram of the control, uh, the, the, the transfer function of the controller that we need to apply to the speed goat to feed the uh, power, the current uh, amplifier. 
that drives the loss picture with this given current as a function of the input pressure. And we do the measurement. So as you see, with this new curve, uh, we have slightly changed the, the behavior of this uh, absorber with the active control by changing it to broadband absorber. So you can see that we have augmented the value of absorption at resonance. So we are almost equal to one with a slight uh, inflection due to the fact that maybe the parameter of the loss picture are not well accurately uh, identified. So this is one of the limitations of this technique, but still we have very good uh, absorption at resonance, which corresponds to a value of impedance, which is equal to rho C on a broad frequency range on the, on the left curve. You see also that the slope of the react of the, uh, the phase of the amplitude is also steep, uh, um, uh, uh, less steep than before. So you have something that is close to zero, much broader than in the passive case, which can be interpreted in terms of absorption with a broader absorption coefficient. So you see that the absorption coefficient um, over, uh, uh, over pass or exceeds 0 0.8 over one frequency decade, maybe between 50 hertz and 500 hertz or a bit less maybe. Apparently, between 16 and And we see that the, um, uh, va the, the frequency band over which the absorption coefficient uh, exceeds 0 0.8 uh, is between uh, 60 hertz and 400 hertz more or less. So we have almost one frequency decay of ideal absorption. Now, this is one way to achieve broadband absorber, but we have still values of frequency for which we have uh, uh, not sufficient absorption probably for, for the application to, to an echoic termination in the frame of uh, for instance, insertion loss measurement. So we will see in the next phase how to set this absorber as a narrow band absorber, but with perfectly absorbing properties on frequency on different frequency range. So we will do this uh, by setting the absorption coefficient of this uh, absorber on different frequency bands, let's say one octave each time, uh, uh, trying to achieve the highest value of absorption for each of these frequency bands. So in the uh, former part, we have uh, shown how to set a broadband sound absorber for almost one decade, but we have seen that the absorption coefficient was not optimal in the band of the frequency of interest. And if you want to apply this for uh, an adnechoic termination for insertion loss measurement, we need to get much higher absorption coefficient, let's say 95% of absorption. So to, that, to do that, we will uh, set the electroacoustic absorber differently. We will set as a series of narrowband absorber at different frequency band. So here we have decided to uh, cover the range, uh, different frequency range centered at 100 hertz, 120 hertz, 25 hertz, 160 hertz, 200 hertz, and 250 hertz. And we do that just by switching the resonant frequency of the absorber, also changing a bit the quality factor because of if we keep the passive quality factor, it's a bit too narrow. So we will just divide the quality factor by four. So first, we set the quality factor to 0.25 compared to the passive one. And then we, we set two different frequencies. So let's start with 100 Hertz. So we multiply, uh, we, 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 we add a, a coefficient of 0 0.63 to the resonant frequency to achieve 100 Hertz resonance. And then we start the measurement. So as you can see, uh, the first peak of this uh, uh, resonator uh, appears at 100 Hertz with a value of almost one and uh, covers values higher than 0 0.95 over a given frequency band. Now we will apply a new setting with a, co with a coefficient on the resonant frequency of 0 0.8 to target 125 Hertz. We apply it to the controller once again and we do the measurement in the tube. So once again, we have shifted the resonant frequency towards 125 Hertz with the same quality factor. So with the same 
uh, relative bandwidth um, in terms of octave. Now we do the same, okay, at one, but it might be useless because it's the natural resonant frequency. Let's move to, um, yeah, let's move to uh, the fourth one, which is uh, centered at 200 hertz, which uh, gives a coefficient of 1.25 to the resonant frequency. Apply the control once again and do the measurement. Two hundred hertz. Last, we achieve we we uh, uh, end with two hundred fifty hertz. So multiplying the resonant frequency by a factor one point six. Apply the control to the controller. And do the measurement. So you see that we are able to cover different frequency bands with optimal absorption coefficient, allowing us to use this, this electroacoustic absorber as an anechoic termination for different frequency range, obviously, in a view to measure, uh, for instance, incension loss in uh, an impedance tube. There's also an alternative way to do so, is to design this electroacoustic absorber as a multiple degree of freedom resonator, which will be the purpose of the next part of the presentation. Now we have shown that we are able to uh, achieve narrow band uh, absorption with the electroacoustic absorber with varying resonant frequency. The next step will be can we uh, achieve a multiple degree of freedom absorption with the same electroacoustic absorber. That means um, uh, cumulating the four uh, preceding resonance on the same device with one single uh, setting. This is what we will do now and for that on the interface it's very simple. We just have to uh, substitute vectors instead of scalars to the, uh, the parameters that we apply and for this we will just apply a resistance on four resonance with value rho c, so that means one 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 as for the coefficient for the resistance. For the resonance frequency we will apply a vector of value 0 0.63, 0 0.8, 1.25, 1.6 to uh, assign the four resonance frequency identified before and for the quality factor here we will just return to the quality factor of the passive absorber which is higher and then have narrower band resonance just to be able to separate each resonance. Otherwise, it might be uh, a bit counterproductive and so we prefer to uh, step back to the original quality factor. So let's apply this setting to uh, the, the electroacoustic absorber here and measure the absorption coefficient achieved with this electroacoustic absorber. So as you can see, this electroacoustic absorber is capable of having multiple resonance with one single device. The result is a bit less uh, efficient than uh, the narrowband absorbers. Uh, so it might be more practical to use narrowband absorber than uh, multiple degree of freedom absorber. But still, we are also able to do this multiple uh, resonances with, same with a single device, which is also a very interesting feature of these techniques to achieve uh, a tracosic sound absorber.